Continuing on my recap from Shooter Symposium, my first class was actually the One Minute Out and Chuck Pressburg combo night vision class. So before we go into the class recap, which will be the next video, I wanted to give a quick helmet breakdown. Uh, I've got a lot of questions on Instagram and in some of the comment sections, guys who have seen it have asked for a helmet breakdown and what I'm running and why. So this isn't like a, hey, you need to run your stuff this way. This is how I have mine set up for me. And then some of the things I've learned along the way from the class, but also from experience. So hopefully this will help you if you're looking to change your setup or if you're looking to get into night vision and looking at setup options and things you might need. Uh, but this is my setup. So real quick, first things first, I carry it in a AXL Advanced Nods Nest. I don't know, if, is it AXL, is it Axel? I don't know. Anyways, I carry it in that. It's just a minimal way to carry it. Uh, it's super nice. There's bags and stuff that you can put them in, but I feel like those are really bulky and take up a ton of space. Because I have camera gear and then all my other gear, I try to save as much space and weight as possible. Uh, the only complaint I have is that I wish that these buckles had the little locking buckles here uh, that have the little latch that keeps it from sliding out because over time, as this bounces around as you're carrying it, it'll start to loosen up and you'll have slack in it. There's a little workaround that I'm working on for that, but that's the only downside I have because eventually the helmet will start to feel like it's gonna slide out. Um, so basically you just undo the uh, crossing straps here, take your helmet out, and then inside is a little tray to mount your, your nods so they just sit in there. Uh, for the sake of this video, I already have them out. That is the Nods Nest from AXL Advanced. Helmet. This is a Imtech Flux and it is a bump helmet. It is not the ballistic version. Um, if you have the money or if you need it for work, a ballistic helmet is obviously a better route to go. It's gonna be, it might be a little bit heavier depending on which manufacturer you go with, but this was provided to me by Hoft and Loaded who are sponsors of the channel. So thank you to Hoft and Loaded. Um, but because it was provided for me, I'm not going to complain that it's a bump helmet and not a ballistic helmet. Uh, also, I just don't need a ballistic helmet personally right now. Um, if I'm in situations where I feel like I need that, then I will get one. Um, if I have just the extra money sitting around, I will upgrade to a, a ballistic helmet. So when you're choosing your own helmet, that is one thing that you'll have to decide. Do you want a bump versus a ballistic? And the other thing you'll have to decide is the way it fits. So one of the questions I get a lot recently is the ratcheting system in the back that has the little dial. And essentially there's just a, a little plastic thing that goes around and it just cinches down on your head to help secure the helmet. That's a technology we've been using in cycling helmets for like almost two decades now. And it was designed to help keep the helmet from rotating around on your head or side to side because when you crash on a, on a bicycle, you typically fall head first, and when people would hit, the helmet would slide and rotate off. So to alleviate some of that, they've made that, and that's now carried over into our helmets that we use for night vision. Now, I see a lot of guys use that as a replacement for a chin strap. They cinch that thing down super tight, and then they use that and just leave the, the chin strap loose. That's not the way to go. It's not what it was designed for. It was to help keep it from rotating, not to eliminate the chin. You still need the chin strap, because if you take a hit from underneath or if like you hit a branch or something from above, it can still knock the helmet off and then drop your nods hitting the ground, whatever, could be very expensive. So it doesn't it doesn't alleviate having a chin strap. It does just make it a little more secure because if you've ever run around under nods or under a helmet with all the weight, as it starts to shift and move around, when you go to throw your goggles back down or if you have them down, you'll start to notice they're off to one side or they're up or down uh, and it just helps help eliminate some of that. So it's, it's to help give a better fit, doesn't replace chin strap, keep that in mind. Not necessarily something that you absolutely need, but some of you, it may be a feature that you want, but there are other options. So there's like a new pad that I think OpsCore or somebody else makes. And basically it just has this pad that goes in the back of your head and it sits like this, like a little hook underneath. And it just grabs the back of your head so that the helmet doesn't shift forward and it keeps it from rotating around as much. Um, it'll still do it, Nothing. there's nothing perfect that'll keep it absolutely locked in, secure, um, but it, it helps. So keep that in mind as you are fitting your helmet, make sure you have a proper fitting helmet, make sure it has the features that you want as far as how things uh, lock into your head in the pads in the back or if it has the dial. I have it wrapped with the Spiritus wrap, so this is one of their wraps they make for, for this helmet. They make them for a couple others as well, the reason that I have it on there is one, the color matches my kit, right? So if you are somebody who's issued like a tan helmet, but you're, you know, your department wears all black, you can just take one of these wraps and put it on there. Um, you can spray paint it as well. You can do a bunch of other things, but I like the wrap because uh, the color, uh, it hides the cables and it gives me more mounting points for some of the things I have on there. So again, something else you'll have to take into consideration as you set up your own personal helmet. Uh, I like it because if I can wrap the cables underneath, I don't have to do them actually into the helmet and underneath the padding and all that. Uh, and it keeps it, it just reduces the snag hazard as you're going through like the woods or if you're on little things, uh, cables sticking out tend to grab on and grab a hold of things and then it rips them out and it's just a pain. So moving on from there, the things that I have mounted to the wrap are, uh, so first I have the Costa Defense SRS, their little cable retention system. 
And the reason I have this, now the helmet does come with the little hooks here on the front and strap. You can use those if your helmet comes with them, if they, especially like these, you can use them and you can hook them into your, to your goggles. The problem is if they break off, if they're down and they break off, that retention is gonna bring them straight back at you and they're gonna slap you in the face. If you have these two, because it's top mounted, if the goggles break off, if you're like turn and you hit something, somebody bumps into you, you catch a tree, whatever, it throws the goggles off to the side, it allows them to dangle and the bungee hangs off to the side so they're not slapping you in the face. So I like this better. It will hold the weight of the goggles. There's a bunch of videos he has, if you go to Coastal Defense on Instagram, there's a bunch of videos where he shows like it's holding up guns, it'll hold up, so it will hold up the weight. It absolutely will, no issues. Uh, on the side, there is stashed away in here a little battery um, and it's just one, little CR-123 that I keep in there just as a backup battery. It has slots for them on both sides. I'm not a huge fan of running batteries exposed on there uh, because batteries exposed in the elements tend to go bad faster in my experience, but that's up to you. Some guys run the thing then it has all the little battery slots down the back. That's cool, that's that's up to you. You run it how you wanna run your kit. Uh, but for me, I just have the one in there because I always tend to forget uh, a battery in here and it'll inevitably go dead and so I hate that. So I, I keep them in there and just, just as like an emergency backup, but Typically, I have my little Theorem battery cell box, and I have all the batteries I need in there. From there, uh, we have the Core Survival. This is their um, marker. So it has the IR, so this is the IR version, which it'll flash, it'll strobe, and then you have a constant on. This is useful like in class for me when we would go down range after we shoot our, our lines of fire. Everybody would turn their strobes on so that we could see where everyone was so that once we come back and we're getting ready to fire the next string uh, of shots, that we're making sure that there's nobody downrange, right? We wanna be able to be aware of where everyone is at all times. And then once we get to firing, we would turn it off just so it's not you know annoying anyone. Otherwise you have this flash, constant pulsing going. Uh, then you have the visible version too. This was actually designed to be when they jump out of planes and uh, got to work with Jamie. And Jamie was the one who actually helped design this. So he knew way more about it than I do. Uh, so if you're interested in it, or you should know more, more about it, go check out One Minute Out, uh, or check out TNBC, there's a ton of info on there as well. Uh, but you have a visible and an IR version to use it as a marker. Those features, the strobing versus the constant on, um, become more relevant depending on what you're doing. So guys who are in the military, who are jumping out of planes, um, or whatever team you're on, those become more important. But for most civilians, it's more so just to mark to see where we're at at, at all times. So I have the little theorem uh, rotating piece, I forget what it's called, but just to rotate this light. Um, and then I have a vampire light on the side. The reason I've gone with this versus, they have some smaller ones, that little micro lights that you can use if you're like trying to read something um, like paper or a map or something. Those work better, you can get them in, in red as well so it doesn't disturb your night vision or your, your natural night vision. Um, I just prefer this because there's a lot of uses for this. So if I'm hiking in the woods, I will use this to help see if I can see something down by my feet. Um, so I can just turn it on. Or actually, let me turn that. That's on IR. I can turn the white light on and look down at my feet if there's something I need to see, pop my nods up and do that. I can also do it under IR as well. Um, but I like that function and it's brighter than the, the little lamp. I just don't find the little lamp useful for me and what I do. And the other thing too is, uh, for some of you guys who are LE um, or guys who do CTV a lot, you can also use it as an umbrella light. So basically when you're in the in the house, you turn it on and then you have the umbrella light where it's giving light bouncing off of the ceiling and not directly on everybody or not directly into the eyes or goggles of the guy in front of you. That's just my setup. I like it. You can move it around. I, I really like the theorem setup with the vampire light. There's a bunch of other options out there that you can use that work just as well um, that may suit your needs better. But for me and the way that I use it, this works for me. Then on the uh, the front, obviously the Wilcox mount, um, I think it's pretty standard in the industry now. I think almost everybody uses the Wilcox mount. And yeah, it is what it is. I don't think there's a ton to say about it, but if you're gonna go night vision, get the Wilcox mount, the breakaway mount, it's the best mount on the market. Uh, again, Jamie talked, he's helped work with, he's worked with Wilcox to help develop a lot of things. And it was cool to hear his insight on the things they've made. And then it's, it's just th their tolerances and how meticulous they are about everything they make. So super cool, um, but anyways, uh, Wilcox mount for for mounting the nods on there. And then moving to the back, uh, I've got the battery pack. Uh, some guys use a counterweight and I don't know, I just feel like that's unnecessarily added weight. I get why you would do it because the helmet wants to to kind of like dive forward. But if you use the, the actual battery pack, it helps alleviate some of that. Or if you have a proper fitting helmet, like we talked about earlier, it'll help alleviate that as well. Uh, but I use the battery pack just because I forget batteries all the time. So this is kind of like my fail safe. And then I've run the cable up under the, the helmet wrap, just snaked it under, and then it comes out up here. Uh, so 
that's how I run it. It's got four double A's in there. I haven't had any issues with it. Works well in, in cold and hot. So what nods am I using? I'm using 31. Uh, I got these through Tag Firearms. So some guys asked, hey, where do you get your nods through? Um, there's a, a bunch of great reputable manufacturers out there or distributors, sellers. These were through Tag Firearms. So shout out to Tag Firearms who are also sponsored of the channel. I did pay for these and um, they're not cheap, right? There are other options out there. If you guys want a whole breakdown on night vision options, that's something we can do in the future. Just leave it in the comments down below. We can make that video happen. Um, but I wanted 31s because they were durable and uh, L3 tubes are, are the best tubes in the market. Um, L bits are right there behind them. So if you're looking at tubes that the, actually internals, um, I think L3 is the best, L bits right behind it. And then you kind of go down from there. Th this is what I wanted. This is what I wanted to use. And then I, you know, still have the, uh, the warranty that can go through. I can go through L3 if something happens, have them fixed, have them maintenance, whatever's needed. And they're pretty common, right? So if something goes wrong or if there's something I want to add to them, like these, uh, Tarsus, um, these Matbox Tarsus, Tarsiers, whatever they're called, but basically these are little, uh, to allow you to focus and, uh, finding parts for them is super easy because they are so common. Uh, the other thing that I will say is that, you know, you can get something like this for whatever nods you have. Um, these are a little more expensive option. The matte box are for sure. But essentially what Jamie said was, Hey, take your, your, uh, your focus and set it to infinity, right? So we would look up at the stars, make sure the stars are in focus. And that allows us to then make out the things that are at distance. And then as things are closer, because they're closer, they're bigger, and we don't need to see as detailed as like, you know, what do they have in their hand? What does their shirt say? Because we can tell if a gun is a gun, even if it's a little blurry. But what these allow you to do is they, like the uh, iris on a, or aperture on a camera, right? So it just alters the amount of light you have, you have coming in, which also changes how much of what you're seeing is in focus. So by putting, by setting your focus to infinity, putting these on and then turning them, it's bringing more of that closer stuff in focus, but it's reducing the amount of light. So then you got to take your your manual gain and turn it up. And then things start to get a little noisy. So it's finding that balance, right? But mainly this is for like, if I'm looking at something, you know, right here and I need to read it or something here, like I need to open a door or I'm working on a gun under nods and I can't turn on a white light. That's when these are useful, not necessary, but they're a good option to have. The cheaper way to go would be to do, um, I think it's the, the focus, uh, F O F H O K U S whatever you can use those and they have little caps that you change out that are different sizes and you can just use those. Those are cheaper. The really cheap way is just to get, I think it's the bull Creek, uh, caps, the scope caps, throw them on there, drill a hole in. If you're going to go that route, please do not drill the hole while they're on your nods. I, I feel like, you know, we should know that, but I feel like it's worth saying. And then the other thing too is, uh, Jamie said, if you're going to go that route, start with a smaller hole first and then slowly make it bigger. Um, and that will help you find the right amount of light that you need. Because once you go too big, you can't get it back down. I feel like there's a joke in there somewhere, but we're just going to bypass that. If you have your nods and you have your helmet and all that set up and you're getting acquainted with it, or if you're new to it, one of the, the best things that I got advice wise to help get acquainted with it is um, from Ninebanger. He said, take your helmet, take your nods and go for a hike. Go in the woods, go for whatever, go for a night ruck um, and, and go do that. And it helps you get acclimated to what it looks like to operate through those or like just function, right? Just function through the smaller field of view and through the tubes. So I would do that. Uh, I would go out in the woods near my house and I would just go for, for hikes at night. Um, when we had our big snow thing here, everything shut down. And because we have snow everywhere, there's a lot of, of ambient light or reflected light from the moon. So I would go and just walk around through the neighborhood because nobody else is out. And it was nice. It was nice to go out and walk around. And you can see, kind of get used to things. And the way that Brandon talked about it was it's kind of like like when you play a video game. So when you're playing a, a first person shooter game, it takes a while to like to get used to like the controls and moving and everything. And that's kind of what it's like. It's just getting used to that first person shooter. And once you get used to it, it's just like second nature. So you become aimbot with it. But yeah, that is my my helmet setup. This is what I used in the class. So since we're talking about what I ran in the class, um, I thought it's it's worth noting what laser I ran. So I did run my PEC 15. This is a full power PEC. Um, I would say there are so many on the market. This is probably the the best bang for the buck of what you're gonna get as far as having a full power laser. If you're gonna go the civilian laser route, probably the mall is, is probably your best option. Uh, it's super bright. It's got some good technology in there. It just didn't work for me. I had a full power mall. The ergonomics didn't work for me. Um, I didn't like the button placement and how I run my lasers. I didn't, there's just a few things that I personally didn't like. Not to say you don't like it, not to say it isn't a great laser, not to say it won't work great for you. Just for me personally, 
I didn't like it as much as I thought I would, so I ended up getting rid of it. Um, and I mainly use a just a full power pack. Um, so I think that if you can get a full power one for the price, you're getting a really good laser. Um, if you want to go with something Gucci or something better, you can do that. But initially, initially I was planning on running the Ingal, which I also got from Tag Firearms, but I found out there was a little tear in the cable and I didn't want to make that any worse or to damage it any further because this is on loan from them. And, um, but I will be doing a video on lasers. If you want an in-depth video on a bunch of different lasers, we can do that as well. Leave in the comments down below. But uh, thanks to Tag for sending this out as well for me to demo. You'll see it in some future videos. We'll be doing a, a laser comparison, some more night vision stuff. There's some things I like about it, some things I don't, but we'll, we'll talk about the different video. But uh, yeah, I think that covers everything as far as gear goes for the class. Uh, if you have questions, about any of this or anything regarding night vision, leave in the comments down below. The next video will be the class kind of recap and then my experience from it. So make sure you hit that like, subscribe, cry chop that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video and I will see you guys in the next one. All right, so helmet, wrap. Ooh, why did I push record? We'll skip that part. We'll throw that in at the end. I really hope all that saved because it just stopped recording for no reason. <laughs>